when you're computing derivatives for components that have vector valued or n dimensional vector valued inputs and outputs, it can get a little bit tricky to handle things as efficiently as possible. So let's, let's walk through how to do it. If you have a component like this one, very, very simple solar cell model, and it has an array valued input of size n by m and an array valued output of size n by m. In this case, I'm assuming n is 2 and m is 3, just to keep things small, but n and m can be of arbitrary size in reality. And we'll declare the partials for that. In this case, we're declaring them as dense. And you can see the calculation here. That's what we need to differentiate. Let's take a look at that derivation together. The equations for this component are delta t equals t minus t naught and eta equals eta naught plus slope delta t divided by ALP underscore SC I'm um, using the variable names from the component for the most part here. Now, just to note, t0, eta naught, slope, and ALP underscore SC, they're all constants given to the problem. So really, the only things that change here are t and then delta t, because it's a function of t, and eta for efficiency. So if this was a scalar equation, the derivative is obviously pretty simple. We're looking for d eta dt. The constant term out front here, the eta zero, will disappear. And we'll end up with just slope over ALP SC. That a little clearer. ALP underscore SC times D delta T DT, but of course that is just very simply one. So all we're left with is slope over ALP underscore SC, and that is constant. So that's pretty straightforward. However, if we make t and eta be arrays of size n by m, bring that up, by m, then the question is what is now, what are the dimensions of this partial derivative now? And the answer turns out to be d eta dt is then of size n times m by n times m. Because what you do is you end up flattening the output array, which is eta, which is of size n by m. So you get one row for each entry in the output array, and you get one column for each entry in the input array. And so that is what you end up with. So if we, just to make things a little simple, assume n equals 2 and m equals 3, then d eta, d eta dt is going to be 6 by 6. So the question is, which entries in six, that 6 by 6 matrix are full here? All right, so we can e, 4, 5, 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so here's our matrix here. This is d eta dt. And the question is, which entries here correspond or get these constant values put into them? So can look at the simple case. Really what we're trying to figure out here is d eta i dt i, where i is some subscript. And that 
entry is the diagonals, right? Where i is equal to i. So that is use diagonals here. And that is going to be equal to a constant, which is slope over ALP underscore SC. But what about when d eta i dt j, right? What happens when i is not equal and the numerator index and the denominator index are not equal? Well, for that, we have to go back to the original equation, which is right here, this equation. And we see that this equation is very simply done element-wise. In other words, when i is equal to i, you get this equation. When i is not equal to i, when i is not equal to j, then you get 0. So the first entry affects the first entry, the second entry affects the second entry, and so on and so forth. But the first entry does not affect the second entry. The first entry does not affect the third entry. And so what ends up happening is that this is equal to 0. So for this very simple case where you have vector inputs and vector outputs and everything is done element-wise, and by element-wise I mean that the ith input only affects the ith output and so on, then you end up with a partial derivative structure like this, where the diagonals are full, they're non-zero, but everything else is zero. And when you specify those partials in OpenMDAO, you actually don't want to specify this as a dense matrix. You want to use a technique called sparse partials, which I will show you when just a sec. We'll flip over to the code and take a look at that, and we'll show how to specify the sparse partials. OK, having run through the derivation, we can now see that when we run the, the OpenMDAO built-in check, that we get the wrong derivatives, right? So we haven't actually defined anything even though we've done the derivation by hand and we get incorrect derivatives compared to the finite difference. So now we can implement the derivatives that we just computed by hand. So if input in j, you don't get access to the outputs when you're computing partial derivatives of explicit components. And we'll create a temporary variable. We'll allocate the matrix. We know it's a 6 by 6 for this problem. And then we will fill it using the fill diagonal method. Because remember, in the derivation, we showed that it was a diagonal matrix. And we'll fill it with the computed value. And then we just need to put that into the right place. In this case, we want efficiency with respect to t. Set that equal to temp. And now, when we run this, we see that we get the wrong answer because it was eta, not efficiency. And now the derivatives match. Which is great. So we have the correct partials. However, there is a slightly more efficient way that we can do this. Currently, we've declared, declared these partials as dense. What we'd really rather do is only specify the non-zero portions of this matrix. That's pretty easy in this case because we know it's diagonal. So we're going to do this. We're going to specify using a sparse syntax. In this case, it's very, very simple again, because it's diagonal. Right, so we need, need to specify the row and column of all the non-zero entries. And in this case, just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are the rows and columns. So very easy there. And now instead of allocating this temporary array, we can actually get rid of all of that. And instead, just set the values directly. And now we don't need a full matrix, we just need an array, and we will multiply the numpy ones array by the correct value for the derivative. And we can run our check partials again.
and there we go. We've got the right answer. But now not only do we have the right answer, we've used a sparse syntax that will allow OpenMDO to be more efficient with the way it allocates memory. So that's how you compute sparse partials for simple element-wise operations on vector-valued functions.